Dr. Dave Bratt is the Dean of the School of Business at Liberty University. Before Liberty, he made national headlines in 2014 when he defeated former House Majority Leader Eric Cantor in the GOP primary for Virginia's 7th District. Ultimately, he won that congressional seat and went on to serve through 2019, so he understands firsthand how government operates. In addition, his knowledge regarding the economy comes from years of experience in business as an economic consultant with Arthur Anderson and the World Bank. Dr. Bratt's premise is that for a long time, especially since the economic crisis of 08, the powers that be started favoring Wall Street. He suggests that many companies knew that if you were too big to fail, the Federal Reserve would always come to the rescue. So the Fed printed too much money, it kept interest rates too low, and that's why he believes, among other things, we are in the mess we're in. As Dr. Brad explains, it's not exactly what the founding fathers intended. We federalized a lot of business, right? And if you think of the way businesses, we got the big everything right now. You got big healthcare, you got big airlines, you got big automobile manufacturers, you got big airlines, you got big banking, you got big everything, right? And the the it's easier to control and put your thumb down on a few of those industries, right? And big tech right now, just to let you know uh, that one, big tech are five firms in the US, Google and Twitter and Microsoft and Apple and Amazon. Those five firms are worth more than all European firms combined, right? Our five US firms are worth more than all the market cap for all firms in Europe to let you know how big. So this is not the way the founders, we used to, we said to start off with some history, right? So the founders and Adam Smith, wanted a lot of small firms duking it out. And competition is the best thing to have a lot of firms on your supply curve duking it out because then none of them can bully the government and get special treatment. Everybody knows if you go get a lobbyist in DC for a million, you can get a line put in the US budget and get a billion dollars. That's a good deal, but that should not be happening in the United States of America, right? That sounds like a banana republic where you got an uncle in the whatever industry, right? That, that, this is not the American way. And James Madison, who wrote the Constitution, had the same logic as Adam Smith coming out of the Enlightenment, right? He wanted to separate power every way possible so that the federal government could never have too much power. So you had the federal and the state and the local uh, pieces of government. But then within the federal, you had the executive branch and the judicial and the legislative branch. So you separate power vertically and horizontally, but unfortunately we've broken that uh, design and now all power is up at the federal government and most of it's in the executive branch where the president can just make these unilateral decrees right now and you will live under that system uh, whether you like it or not. And then you got to challenge it in court and two years later, the court probably reverses some of it, but it's a terrible system we're living on. I mentioned before the Federal Reserve. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of people don't even know what the Federal Reserve is. Right. Uh, I think yeah. people say, uh, okay, Jerome Powell. Yeah, Jerome Powell is the head of the Federal Reserve and he's raising right. rates. And I don't think people even know what yeah. that means. So right. <laughs> what is the Federal Reserve? What is Jerome Powell doing? How did it come to be? Right. Uh, way back to 1917, it was chartered by the U.S. Congress. It's under the U.S. Congress. It's a quasi-bank and quasi-government. So it's, it's not the government and it's not a bank. It's this creation of the Congress. And they have, there's 12 reserve banks around the country, right? There's one in DC and there's one in Minneapolis. There's one in Richmond, Virginia. There's you know one out in California. There's 12 of them around. And those 12 uh, presidents get together and, and decide what monetary policy should be for the country. And so unfortunately, they, they used to be, uh, you know, like statesmen in politics, they'd always do the right thing for the country, period. But now everything is politicized and I know how it feels. So I get, when you're getting uh, your, your name pasted across the New York Times and the Washington Post every day, unfairly, it's, it's not pleasant, uh, but if you don't like it, then don't take the job. And so, you know, their mandate, their number one mandate is never to allow inflation to come about, right? We wanted stable prices. That's their charter. 
just keep a stable price uh, that can't be manipulated because then businesses can make long range plans. Idea is if you have stable prices, then people can make 30 year bets on should I buy that plant out there in Michigan or out there and wherever and invest tons, you know, tens of millions of dollars this can go way up or way down. You're like, no, I'm not going to take that risk. But if you have a stable price system, that's what separates us from a lot of the countries who are not as rich. So we had stable prices, but now the Fed has ruined things back in 07, 08. And right now uh, we're in what's called the everything bubble, right? So back in 07, 08, it was just a housing crisis. Right now, every asset class is overpriced. The stock market, the bond market, the commodity market, the real estate market, they're all overpriced. <clears throat> so now the Fed is raising interest rates to pop the everything bubble. That doesn't sound good to you, does it? Yeah. <laughs> There's a huge everything bubble. And so uh, that the Federal Reserve is awesome uh, responsibility that most of us wouldn't want, uh, but they've goofed up for two decades in a row in just a terrible way. And if, if you just want to read someone neutral that's not put, just go look at John Taylor. He's got the Taylor rule, and he's got a graph of what the Fed should have done based on a just economic common sense. Okay. So. If we're waiting around for this bubble to pop, yep. When is it going to pop? And yep. what is going to happen? Yep. And third part, what do you do? Do you just sit right. and then wait for things to get better or Yeah, good question and uh, it's popping right now. So we're in a bear market. The stock market is down over 20%, the bond market is down 20%. That now usually when the stock market goes down, uh, people close to retirement, you know, have like a 60-40, 60 40, 60% 60 stocks, 40% bonds to be careful, to be safe. Bonds don't have as much risk, so usually they're safe. But now, because the Fed has goofed up so bad, the bond market is tanking terrible also. The stock market is tanking. In England two days ago, you saw there was almost a sovereign debt crisis. The sovereign debt crisis, sovereign just means the national uh, debt. They, their pension funds almost imploded and they almost lost their entire financial system, uh, except the federal government had to throw in a bunch of long term maturities bonds to save the day. And so luckily they did. Uh, and so your next question is, what do you do? Where do you put your money? You know, and so I, I, I'm still old school. There's a book by Jeremy Siegel uh, and the best recommendation is just stay and buy index funds, buy the whole market, diversify, buy a little of everything, and just let the money stay in. This time, I was actually tempted to try and time the market, which you're, you're not supposed to do, but I just saw it coming. You know, so then if you're, if you're rich and you like playing around with money, you would get out into cash, right? And, just cause, and, then, and even with cash, you got inflation, so you're losing 8% every year on the cash. So you're not winning there either, but it's less harm than losing 30% of your money in stocks. Then when it goes back up, if you get in late, you just missed all that gain, right? So that's why they say, just stay in. And so I'm still old school. I got my, all my money losing value right now, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm not ready to retire tomorrow. So I can just stay in and hopefully in a decade, it gets back up and, and USA gets back on track again. Okay, so that was the question. You just said a decade. Yeah. Is that, is that how long we're talking about to get back to where we were? Uh, to where we were, yes. But I'll, I'll just say where we were was artificial. So wanting to get back to uh, being on a sugar high that wasn't realistic in the first place, right? And so uh, we'll, we'll get track but it, it's going to take a lot of spinach right the american people have been used to santa claus i want more and more and more i mean you can just visualize this right if you're a politician and you get near a conversation on social security or medicare you're dead you can't bring it up but right now you know students go to college they do a master's they take a year off they go travel the world they come back they start working in earnest at 28 or 30 uh, some people retire at 62, 
So you worked 30 years and you lived to be 90. Well, just common sense, right? The, 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 we need to rejigger the system. There's no way that's sustainable, right? That you work for 30 years and, and that's when you're younger and in shape and your health is pretty good. And now the bills, uh, as you go from 60 to 90, you know what the bill is per, it's more than you made in your whole life. Well, how does that work, right? And so the American people got to get back and get a new social contract, some new deal. So as we move in to the fourth quarter, yep. what do you see happening in the next couple of months? And especially we're in the middle of the, the midterm. Yeah. Yeah, well, I like seeing you smile more than <laughs> frown, but I'm going to make you frown again. I, I think we got more pain. I think the market's got probably another 10% down at least. Uh, we really have not seen. So here's the deal. And this is a little controversial, but the interest rates you're seeing right now are tanking the markets. But really, those are probably the interest rates that should be around. Right? The problem is we were at zero and we had to adjust to a 3% new level back to reality. So everybody that made any business decision in the past five or 10 years that went out, assuming you're gonna have 0% interest rates, they made a bad bet and they're all gonna lose. Well, that's a lot of people, the whole real estate sector, right? That's why they're hitting a, a lot of car uh, payments, new interest rates, uh, they're hurting. Anyone that's in a business and they've made long-term bets, that whole interest rate regime is changing. And so there's gonna be a lot, uh, the, the unemployment rate it is low right now. It's gonna start ticking up probably at least a couple more points from three to four to five percent unemployment. Some firms are gonna go out of business. We're gonna see who made the bad bets in the financial crisis. You remember Bear Stearns and the Lehman Brothers moment. We're gonna have a couple of those. You just had one in England with their sovereign debt crisis. So you're going to hear a few more of those names pop and uh, everyone's hustling right now to uh, be the last man or the last firm standing. So your advice to, I guess, I, I think that the advice, it, yeah. it might be a little different depending on your age. Uh, yep. So if you're just starting out in the workforce, yep. what would your advice be? And if you're in your 70s uh, yeah. and, or 80 and, and you're sitting there yep. watching your, your right. retirement portfolio drop, yep. uh, what, what do you do? My advice, and I'm highly conservative, is the same for all people. I'd get yourself back in the labor market right now while there's still jobs to be had. Uh, I would get a job. I don't care how old you are. I'm going to work till I'm 90. I'll be yelling at students till the day I die, right? I love doing that. So it's fun. And uh, so you got to, whatever reason God put you on the planet, uh, keep doing it, get yourself out there and you're going to get a wage rate, a salary, benefits, et cetera. That's the, and, and then for the young people, you got to skill them up. Uh, firms don't hire personality or, you know, unless you're in sales, they hire a set of skills. So if your kids are in K to 12, don't let them coast, have them develop a skill set. And then when they're in college, I'm pushing technology on everybody here. But uh, business degree is great by itself, but you've got to combine it with something quantitative these days, accounting, finance, uh, data analytics, data analysis, computer science, information technology, cybersecurity is huge, information security. If you just take a few courses in those, you'll get snapped up like this at double the salary. And so right now, if you're concerned and you're nervous, which you ought to be, skill up because that's, that's what can, and, 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 and it's not like, you know, just some people can get rich. Our, our system doesn't have an upper bound, right? The, the Marxists have kind of gotten our skin like, well, some get rich, others are going to suffer. No, every kid can get skilled up and every kid, whether they're rich or poor, whatever, skill up and get rich. That's what the productivity piece is just the key for everybody. But uh, you got to eat your spinach and, uh, and, and uh, dig in when you're young and, 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 and not have pizza parties all the time and uh, dig into some of the quantitative stuff and uh, you'll do fine. Okay, just to wrap up, I was talking about possibly naming this program the politics of money. What does yeah. that 
What does that mean to you? Uh, that's very simple. The American people uh, are shocking. I ran on all economic issues and no one cared a bit. Back when we had 10 trillion in debt, I said, this is a disaster. We had 20 trillion in debt. I said, this is unsustainable. Now we're 31 trillion in debt and they still want more Santa Claus, right? So everyone wants more benefits, lower taxes, uh, an easier life, an earlier retirement. No one wants what made the country great, right? The old Puritan work ethic. Uh, no one wants to just dig in and, and, and be productive for the sake of your family, your kids, your country, uh, giving to the church, supporting voluntary associations in your neighborhood, nonprofits, et cetera. Uh, I think we've gotten a little uh, too egotistical uh, looking in the mirror and uh, me, 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 the me generation. And so we just got to get back to uh, wanting to be productive to, to uh, help others and to help this. That takes a cultural change. Everyone's going to have to get off of TikTok and get back into the technology books. Well, it's interesting that you say it like that, a cultural change, because yeah. I think there are a lot of people who do have those values that you pointed yeah. out. However, yeah. those people are not highlighted in yep. the media or on social platforms as something yep. that is aspirational. Perhaps right. when, right. you know, tw 10, maybe 30 years ago, perhaps, yep. uh, but today uh, I think there might be um, some faulty thinking uh, on, yep. on what's valuable or yep. to aspire to. So I right. think that perhaps uh, maybe if we start to take a look at that, in the yep. culture and and highlighting those individuals who are really uh, contributing to society and their community and the church and yep. it doesn't have to be church it, it could be any anything any spiritually emotionally yep. and physically i think that uh it will be a very interesting road moving forward so yeah that, that's right and, and and for the religious folks out there i mean the, the number one question for the Catholics in the Baltimore Catechism and for the Protestants in their catechism, what's the chief end of man? Why are you on the planet? To glorify God. Well, uh, when's, you know, 90% uh, of the country is still in those camps, right? Judeo-Christian tradition, Jewish, same, same answer. And so uh, when it comes to skills and jobs and et cetera, a lot of us in the free market system just got into the habit of, uh, I just want the job that pays me the most. Instead of, no, you know, if I'm going to do something all day from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. or whatever and work the weekends, maybe I should choose something that's linked to upstairs and my calling uh, and something that serves humanity, right? So it's not just taking the job that makes the most money, uh, but aiming yourself at a job that uh, you got to be happy and happy before you're going to fail, right? So nothing against that, but go get something passionate that also serves others simultaneously. And I think if everyone would make that cultural shift, that we'd have a revolution on our hands. Well, I think that's a, a very interesting thought to end on today. And uh, Dave, it's been an absolute pleasure. I, I sincerely appreciate you coming in today. And you, you really explain so much in a, in a way that's digestible so that uh, us regular folks don't feel stupid when you know we're trying to figure out what's going on because I think it's really, you know, just taking a deep breath and saying, okay, uh, no, I don't know that. I don't know that. And how am I going to learn? And where is the information? Which if they want information about you and your work, where can they go? Yeah, well, thank you for your contribution here and, and helping to educate. I'm just a regular guy too. I just, my focus has always been economics. So that's what I do. But uh, you're putting the information out there. It takes a whole team. People can get me, I'm out on Getter, G-E-T-T-R, on that platform under Brat Economics. And it's just economics and it's videos. And I put up little mini short lectures on all the stuff I talked about today. You know, if you go way back, it's a big 20 or 30 minutes on productivity. And then I do whatever, the debt, the, and the kids are in debt. We didn't bring up the next generation. We'll do that next time. Yeah. Uh, but I got all that out there at Brat Economics on Getter. Terrific. Dave, thank you. Thank you so much. I thank really you, appreciate Allison. it. It was an absolute pleasure and I will see you next time.
enjoyed doing it. God bless everybody out there. Have a great day. See y'all. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.